in this section we are going to look at how to size electric motor to get the right size of electric motor for your use okay so we are going to see the basic steps that we need to follow in determining what is right for our facility without undersizing or oversizing the electric motor so what are the basic steps that we need to follow in sizing the electric motor so the first that we need to do is to determine the load that we want to drive with that electric motor okay the amount of load that we want to drive or the maximum amount of load that we want to drive with that particular electric motor that's the first step then that's from that load once we get it we we'll now determine the power requirement for that particular load they will then convert that power to horsepower okay for us to know the size of the motor that will definitely that will be able to carry or to meet that uh, load they will consider um, the efficiency okay of that particular motor remember the lower the efficiency the higher the wasted energy on that particular motor so we need a more efficient electric motor motor with higher efficiency to run in our system to reduce our energy cost so there's from after those consideration from the data sheet of the manufacturer we cannot select the motor okay that will be right for our use now from that power rating or size of the motor we can now select the frame size that will fit our use then lastly we now want to look at the voltage and the frequency okay that electrical parameters must match the that of our installation that is we should be able to feed the electric motor with those power requirements so now the first step is how to determine the load how do we determine the load there are many ways of determining the load okay that we want to drive in the system uh, with uh, the electric motor so we are going to consider a few so first we need in determining the load we need to determine the torque that will be exerted so as you can see torque is force times the lever arm that you are using to exert that torque okay now force we know that force is the weight that will be driven the weight of the load that will be driven okay times the acceleration due to gravity okay so which means that we need to know the weight of the load that we will uh, be driving okay so now let's assume that we want to use the, the particular motor to drive a conveyor belt so the maximum amount of load of weight that will be on the conveyor belt is what we need to consider are we getting it so the weight in newton which is uh, uh, the kilogram that is the weight in kilogram times acceleration due to gravity okay will give us the force or the weight in newton are we getting it so now that times the lever arm that is the distance between the middle of the shaft here okay to the shaft where the pulley the drive belt will be on are we getting it that will give us the lever arm okay so the maximum amount of load times this distance in meters okay from the middle of the shaft from the electric motor to the middle of this shaft where the pulley will be on okay that will give us the torque so that is the first step so if uh, you do not know the 
okay, if uh, that calculation could be a bit uh, difficult for you, what you can do also is to put the maximum amount of load, the load that you know will be on the conveyor belt, okay, and use a torque wrench to try to drive the load or to push the load. So the minimum amount of torque that will be required to start moving the conveyor belt, okay, becomes the weight in Newton of the load. So you take note of that, okay, in calculating your your level, that is in calculating your torque. That is in the case that you do not know the weight of the load, okay, you can use that. Or you can directly weigh that load to determine the force, okay, that will be exerted. So the same thing here too, this is the electric motor, okay, so you see that this is the lever arm, the length of the lever arm, you measure it in meters. So as you are doing all of this, remember you need to calculate, you need to take into consideration the bed slippage if it is like this. But if it is a directly coupled machine, okay, it's just for you to determine the weight of the load that it that will be driven. Are you getting it? Then that is the only thing that you need to consider. Now you have known the load, the torque. Then the next step is the speed that will be required. If you want the conveyor belt to run at 2 meters per second, that will now determine your ROPM. Are we getting it? So if you are using JAR system, the JAR ratio of the JAR bus, you have to consider it to also determine the speed of the electric motor. So next, what you need to do, you have known the, 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 the torque, the size of the load that the motor wants to drive now. So next, you need to calculate the power of the electric motor, okay? That will be sufficient to drive that load. So the power, remember you have calculated the torque. So the power becomes the torque times the angular velocity. So here is um, a unit of, uh, that is a formula for you to convert that RPM into angular velocity velocity okay so angular velocity is 2 times pi times the rpm are you getting it remember we said on that in the case of that conveyor belt we said 2 meters per second per second so you now convert that 2 meters per second to revolution per minute okay that will give us a uh, speed divided by 60 so after we have done that, we have gotten the angular velocity, the torque. We have gotten the torque before. We multiply the torque now, which is the weight of what we want to drive, times the angular velocity, okay? Which is we which we will determine by the speed or with the speed that will now give us the power. So that power that we have gotten will now convert that power to horse power, okay? The power in kilowatt, I mean to say, we will now convert that power in kilowatt to horse power. And that we simply do by dividing the kilowatt that we have with 746, okay? So assuming that 700 watts from our power calculation here, so that 700 watts will now divide it with 746 okay to give us the horsepower rating so if it is say 2000 watts that we had we divide it by 746 to give us the power rating of the motor that we will need to drive our load so remember the steps first we determine the load in newton okay then, after we have determined the load in Newton, they will now determine the torque. Are we getting it? So, we will now determine the torque, which is the load, the weight, okay, times the, the lever arm 
or the distance okay as we saw in the case of that conveyor belt then the power will now become the torque times the angular velocity so to convert that to horsepower we will now convert that wattage that we have gotten to horsepower by dividing with 746 okay so remember we need to also adjust for efficiency the amount of efficiency that we need in the system so now we have known the horsepower that our load will exert minimally so we want to determine the right size of a motor for that load okay so now in selecting the motor we need to look at the uh, the right frame size okay you see like in this uh, this uh, nameplate you see the frame size okay that we match that horsepower rating that we had which is 60 60 horsepower Remember we converted wattage to horsepower okay so that will match this okay that is what we need to do next in selecting the motor so now in selecting the motor we need to consult the particular manufacturer of interest okay to give us their frame data or motor frame data or we can use the NEMA frame data as you can see here okay so we use the NEMA frame data to determine the size so let's assume that from our calculation we determine that the load okay the minimum amount of load that the load we expected we we want to drive will exert on the motor is 40 horsepower from our earlier calculation so if it is 40 this is 40 then this is the rpm 1800 rpm so if you okay let's say 30 okay so if you look at it the frame size as you can see here is 286 that would be the frame size of the generator of the electric motor that will be selected okay so like in the in this case now you see that this particular frame size is what gave this 60 horsepower because it has been assumed that this is this will be able to drive our load this 50 horsepower under the this rpm okay which is this 1780 rpm so that is what we got from that is got it from a similar table like this are we getting it so you look at the OSPA, the horsepower calculation okay against the required speed okay so here we have the frame size to be 286 so what does this 286 t what does it uh, mean the frame size okay so that frame size actually determines the size of the electric motor and it's usually uh, determined is usually determined by the distance between the center of the motor shaft and uh, the horizontal plane okay on which the motor foot will sit that is from here now this hitch from here to here okay actually determines the frame size okay so from here to here is actually the center of the shaft to the floor on which the, uh, the sitting or foot of the electric motor will sit which is this ish okay so from here to here okay gives the ish and that is what is given here see it so if you maybe your earlier selection lands you at 360 t that means that the distance this distance h okay this distance h is nine inches 
or 228.6 uh, uh, millimeters, okay? Millimeters. So, what this means that you is not telling you the dimension of the motor that will be able to drive your load. So, you want to also use it to consider the load itself, whether it will be able to sit comfortably, okay, around that load to drive it. Or maybe you will need to do some reconstruction to retrofit that particular motor into your system. So all of these are things that you need to consider while you are doing the selection. So that is what the frame size means, okay? The distance. And you see that the, the higher the frame size, okay, the bigger the frame size, I mean to say, the higher that distance from the middle of that shaft to the floor, okay? So what we are saying is that the frame size is usually what determines the distance between this the center of this shaft to this floor where the foot of the electric motor will sit. So from here to here, okay, gives that is determines the frame size. So the higher the frame size, the higher that uh, distance, okay, and that means that the bigger the electric motor will be. So once you have determined that frame size, okay, say assume you select any of those frame size from any of the manufacturer, the data sheet will further tell you every other dimensions, as we said earlier, okay, all these measurements. So you want to look at them critically to see that they will fit into wherever you want to install this electric motor. If it's a new design, fine, you'll be able to, uh, uh, that is, you'll be able to configure your load to fit the motor since it's a new design. But if not, if it is not, okay, if it's what you have installed already before, that means that you need to consider this and see if it will fit or if it will sit properly. If it will not be able to sit properly, what are the things that you would do, okay? The reconstructions that you would do to enable it to sit properly and if it is something that you can accommodate in your facility, okay? So here are some of the operating parameters for this frame size from this particular manufacturer. Okay, you see the speed, full load speed, the power factor, okay? So, like in this case now, you see that the power factor is very low. So, which means that you have a wastage of about 25%. You have to think of that, okay? If it is something that you cannot accommodate, you need to look for one that have a better efficiency. So you see the weights and the starting currents, the torque that it will be able to exert, all of this, okay? You need to put all of this into consideration to do your final selection. Remember, we are turning towards uh, selecting or uh, using more efficient electric motor in our system to reduce the energy cost for our facility. So we want to be sure that what we are selecting is the most efficient, putting every other consideration, uh, every other parameters into consideration, so it's the most efficient that we can get our hands on, okay, for our facility. So once you have put all of those into consideration, you can now make your choice of the electric motor that you want to use for your system.